Hi, folks. You are watching and listening to another episode of Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media, all of our channels and networks. I'm Mike Morales here in sultry Southern California. That gentleman out there is... I'm Bryce Taylor in Austin, Texas. And Bryce and I uh, are are really kind of jazzed because this tequila kind of came across my desk and it's really, it's so new, I don't think anybody's ever seen it. No. And they had uh, uh, the owners, uh, we'll get into more of the stats and stories, but they sent this to us just days ago. And I'll get rid of my phone here in a second. But it's called Alto Canto. Mm. And... Bryce, I love the everybody's going into these new these new boxes. Man. Yeah, sing, single single bottle box or yeah, I don't I don't know what to call it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, even even our uh, our info sheet here, like we're thrilled you're to be uh, one of the first people in the United States to try uh, the Alto Canto. Yeah, so, uh, solid. You know, kind of got that uh, magnetic closure, full opening. Yeah, as you can see, I, I yeah. haven't even broken the seal on mine. Yeah. I didn't. I uh, I prepped it with just taking the... The plastic off? Yeah, the plastic off, because that makes you look like... Oh, uh, yeah, because otherwise dumb you, dumb. Can watch, you can yeah. watch Mike, uh, you know, uh, you, you see, everybody has seen me struggle with the cellophane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, this is... I, I'm really excited, and I know, I, I know off camera, Bryce was uh, perusing the website, and it, it's a very interesting, uh, I, I try to do like a, the, the literal translation for the Alto Canto is a higher song. Okay. Yeah. But I think that they were going for a much, I, I think more elegantly we can, we can say, and I, and I told this to Bryce off camera. I said, I think, I think what they were going for is like uh, a higher octave. Okay. So, so we're, okay. you know, and yeah. I think, and we'll, and we'll get into the stories yeah. and stats, why we're calling it that and why, why, they why they're going it. that route. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we're going to use the Estazo Jarrito for tequila. Oh, of course. And, and uh, I'm I'm working. Uh, we just discovered that they have a new, um, they have a a uh, a brand ambassador now. So Thomas Ristoff has uh, grown up. Oh, yeah. And uh, we are. Uh, Lo local boy here for me. Yeah. Um, I've oh. got some guy. I, he was, apparently he went, to, he had. Uh, uh he was at our tasting yesterday or saturday the the la tequila club at a tasting at el cholo and we were just there to support and i guess he came up and talked to alex and I, I didn't know there were so many you know it's funny besides you and me because i don't consider you an influencer i i know you're a teacher because i i know i you yeah. know you're first of all he's one of our students of the tequila catador course and this guy has already had, you know him as the Austin Tequila Connoisseurs, if you've been watching uh, Instagram and, you know, uh, so so you've seen Bryce's face everywhere, right? But but there were there were people that showed up and I don't know what it is about Pasadena, but it tends to, it tends to, um, uh, that, that town tends to attract a lot of influencers that, you know, I'm glad that they're coming to events like like that because then they're mm -hmm. learning something new. Because you know as well as I do that the misinformation that's out there is yeah. is scary. So uh, yeah, but if everyone's trying to learn, then you also get that opportunity to teach them, which exactly. is exactly, which is an and an opportunity just, at the yes. end of the day. Yeah, and and that's and I and I'm really grateful for that because as as you well know, you know you don't get that chance very often because many of these folks prefer to just get paid and and you know superficially learn what they learned over the over the pandemic you mm -hmm. know um and that's not how we roll and that's not how Bryce rolls either that's why that's why I'm 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 really excited to try try this one yeah. and I got to tell you Bryce right off the bat beautiful legs and tears man I don't know if you can see that on my camera, but it is outstanding. Yeah, I'm checking now, but I only skipped it because Yikes. I've looked into their production methods so much that I'm just giddy, and I kind of skipped that. But, <laughs> well, um, you know what? Why yeah. are you looking at that while we're while we're yeah. showing likes and tears? Tell us what, why, what makes it, why you're so giddy. Uh well, one, I mean, the the higher ele elevation is, is is cool, but it's not it's not just that it's the the production methods mm -hmm. i mean it's 
it's pretty much kind of as old school as you get for, you know, modern day tequilas, you know, stone brick oven, like Tahona wood fermentation. I mean, uh, I mean, they even mentioned malolactic, uh, you wow. know, fermentation, allowing wow. it to go malolactic. And, um, so, I mean, that's another thing to look into. We don't, we don't have all the time for that, but essentially it's like deep fermentation, right? Right. So yeah, after the longer the, fermentation, it's a yeah. malolactic is similar if you got if you folks are wine people you understand the term malolactic you get a lot in wine in tequila you don't it sometimes people consider it an off flavor that they're not used to but it's something that bryce and i we just did yeah. you know well, i'd say off because I, I think you're right in saying that it's not um i don't want to say not traditional it's not common anymore right. because tequila has gotten pretty um cookie cutter yeah, industrial, you know, so it takes time and it's artisanal, um, you know, but that gets me excited. So sure, anything you do is going to either excite people or turn people off. Bryce um, has got a tequila stiffy. <laughs> yeah, I know. That is true. <laughs> and I, I get it. I get it. Some in the nose. It's not over the top. No, no, it's not like Atanasio yeah. is really over the top, you know, yeah. lactic and you have to enjoy that. In fact, the Valor, I'm not sure you've had it. No, yeah, I've had the. But I've my had lord, the is, to me, is Atanasio mm-hmm. light, you know. Yeah, and I and I love all of those. So for me, you know, like I said, you know, taste is subjective, but for me, that I, I enjoy it. So I would yeah. rate that higher. Not that ratings are everything, but at least if you listen to me, you would know my my profile and my preferences. I would rate now that. Now we get, so. I get some sweetness on the bottom, and and granted, we just yeah. broke the seal off of these, mm. so and they've been sitting on our, on my living room floor only a few days. I mean, we yeah. just received yeah. these four, four, five days, four, or five me. days ago, which which is rare for us because usually they just sit on our living room floor for weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, so the agave, getting, the agave is there, cooked, right? Buttery, dark agave. Um, the citrus is um, the citrus is high level though it's a there's a nice minerality it's like a citrus with minerals in it yeah uh so it's not the zest it's not the bright high points of citrus it's no. like the lower like the rind is sat on the table for a day Ooh, that's specific <laughs> yeah I, I i crush a lot of i, I citrus, was gonna say by the way. are you yeah. kind of a slob in the kitchen <laughs> no but I, I make a make a lot of cocktails i i squeeze my own uh like juices so and yeah. that's a nice bit i'm getting nice baked aroma on this side and i get more of the of the the the, the zest or the rind you know under underneath here and it and it leans more toward lime and grapefruit to me yeah that minerality is there um wow like dense minerals not not the not the spiky like briny minerals no. but the more like not quite petrichor, but the earthy minerals. Yeah, that's it. Earthy. Yeah. And honestly, very, the alcohol, mm. not even a big deal. It's not even, no. even when you just, I, I like to, I like to inhale with my mouth open because I'm tasting it at the same time. You can do that. That's, yeah. That's what this is for. Yeah. And, and, and when I do, when I search for alcohol, I generally do it with my, with my mouth closed, but just because it's, You'll, you know, you know what it's like to alcohol go up your nose anyway, right? So you're going to, you're going to sense it right away. Yeah. And it's so minimal. It's not, it's not even a factor. Yeah. I do a lot of my nosing with my mouth closed just because I think that's the way I started. Um, But yeah, I don't get that punch of alcohol. Well, you want to dive in? I think it's, I I think I do. I, 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 I love the nose. The nose, it's, it's actually quite elegant. Yeah. For for as rustico as it sounds, it's there's, it's a quite elegant nose. I'm very surprised. Yeah, there's I, depth. I, thought, there's, I thought it was going to be punchier, you know, like like something out of a matitan or something, but it's not. It really is. Yeah, but with I mean, stone cooked. I mean, the copper stills, wood, like all of those things, to me, make me anticipate like a more rounded, rustic, and that that's kind of what I'm more getting. like an El Tesoro because that's what it sounds yeah. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only, no, only even at a higher altitude, apparently. Yeah. Which which we'll get to. We'll get yeah. to. Let's let's dive yeah. in. Let's go into it. Yeah, for sure. Here we go. Mm. Mm. No. 
Yeah, no, it it does not right, disappoint. Folks, bucket is your friend. Yeah. <laughs> Day drinking, not even not a habit of mine these days. You know, usually it's nighttime drinking, but anyway. Yeah. Um, I, that was my first pass, and I hadn't had. I literally have not had anything in my mouth all morning. So, um, I on the first pass it was just very sweet. The sweetness, the the for me, I don't know what I don't know. I don't neither neither one of us yeah. like to make a, an initial determination on that. Yeah. Piece. And with whiskey, I just met a whiskey uh, uh, guy the other day, and he says, you know, usually you make a determination on the third pass, but that's with whiskey, I think. I, I think yeah. with Bobby, it, it uh, you know, I, I think after my first and second passes, I, I can, I can. Yeah, I'm comfortable on second. Normally, first is palate setting. Um, yeah. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, I have had a libation or two today but uh so the, the, well, it's the, the end first, of your day it's your cocktail yeah hours. yeah, yeah well the, the the first pass you know i i still you're right i i picked up the the agave sweetness but some minerality um not as much depth that i think will come on the second because it's it's still true it's like i'm still warming up to this spirit yeah right right I and, and, and on price knows today. how to reset yeah. his palate anyway so he yeah. knows you know i, I mean He's one of our students, and so he knows that the my my favorite trick, and it's and it's a catador trick. You rinse your mouth with with vodka before you go on camera. So anything that you may have had, even coffee, that yeah. it depends on what you're what you're tasting. But you what know, type, you're yeah, do like extra añejos and stuff. Even coffee will will reset that palate. But black coffee, you know, nothing, no sweeteners in it. Yeah. Um, and I know and, I've mentioned that before, and people kind of scoff, and I'm like, well, maybe you like your coffee different, but like. Coffee is pretty plain, so I yeah, find it no, pretty neutral. Yeah, it's a, especially you know, it, like I said, I tell this story all the time. My first day as a as a as a judge at the Spirits of Mexico years ago, we did 111 blancos on one day. Oh, oh, yeah. It's like, you know, you're you're talking like this at the end of the yeah. day, you know. And then what yeah. do we do afterwards? Right, we go out and have dinner, and then go drink some more. So, yeah. uh, so it's literally like building a callus on your hand and. And and it does take some time, but generally speaking, as a as a taster, as a catador, more anything over ten samples at one time, well, you know, you, you got that palate fatigue, and it and that's a real thing, folks. Yes. And so yeah. you're constantly trying to do, you know, when you're at a when you're a judge at a show and you only have a day or a day and a half to do like everything, you just you you do you pull out every trick out of your hat, you know, <laughs> and and coffee's one of them, but. But generally, it's vodka, and vodka is yeah. a good ne neutral grain spirit. Just right. kills everything in your mouth. And then, yeah, I, I mean, even with the vodka, I normally just rinse with water after that. And then, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and I've got you know, I, I always go to Walmart and get the the cheapest handle of vodka. And, and when I tell people, you know, they look at me like I'm like I'm a drunk because I'm buying yeah, yeah. one seven five. They go, "Don't worry, I only use it as mouthwash." You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> you know? It's like, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> Oh, now it's opening yeah. up even better. Oh, now it's even sweeter on the nose. Yeah. I'm getting, yeah, more agave sweetness, but also still more depth in the minerality. The minerality is kind of adding layers, Yeah, which for my palate, I love. This is a very complex tequila right off, yeah. the, right off the bat. And and not just on the flavor. Of course, I've only had one pass. Yeah. But I was getting, I was going to mention lip and gum numbness is long lasting on this thing. I, I really did hold it between my, my lip and gum. And I look for that, that, you know, you want that lip and gum numbness, that, that, that uh, pepperiness that, you know, the white pepper kind of thing. Yeah. It's like a, like a, yeah, just a, like a black quality pepper. alcohol. Like you don't have to just get that from high proof. Cause it's still a 40 ABV 80 proof, but you still want that quality. You don't want it to be thin, you know? Right. And there's no, no, the mouthfeel on this right now is perfect. Mm -hmm. I gotta say that there's not a thin tequila. So I'm going to go mm -hmm. for my second pass. Yeah. Second pass. Yeah. Good viscosity. Um, mm. It fills the mouth. Mm. The agave mm. went less sweet, more buttery, mm -hmm. more round. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Yeah. The mineral, mm. yeah, minerals are still there, but the buttery agave kind of fills the mouth more so buttery, than the minerals. And buttery is a really good descriptor for when we talk about the malolactic that's mm. that's where it's coming from the butter yeah. is coming from the malolactic so it's not over the top it's way it's just under and that's where you get that butteriness that that really oh my god that's delicious 
Wow, that's really yeah, good. Yeah, and, and I get buttery also out of like well-cooked pina. So it's like you have to remember you're doing a, a full oven load, right? So it's not right. each pina. So it's like the, um, I won't say efficiency, consistency. Consistency of all the pinas being cooked well, I think is more likely to give you that buttery, you know, yeah. than just yeah, there's less There's less caramelized, there's less yeah. burned you know, there's some of the older ovens that, that you get the buttery stuff at the bot at the top, and then you get mm. all the burnt the the char on the bottom. You know, and and I don't know if that's from use because they got to clean those ovens. Yeah, every single use. Um, well, it could just be the old the old school. You know, they only they only steam from the top or only steam from the bottom to where. Right, but well, know, the newer the newer ovens that later, are, the yeah. newer ovens really act like. Um, when we visited um, the distillery where Penta is made in El Cristiano, mm -hmm. Casa Seves, they just installed new ovens and the ovens react like a like a, an autoclave. So yeah. it's way more from top and bottom and probably from the sides as well. Um, so it's a much more uniform cooking and baking, um, but you're still getting that you're, you're still getting the elements of the, uh, that you get from because it's still a stone brick oven. It's still Montpostia, right. so. Um, yeah, I think Felipe really... was good with that steaming from the top and bottom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, to... Felipe. Well, he's a yeah. crazy genius. Yeah. That's why. We're going to go in for my third pass and then see, and then we'll give you some ins and outs. You guys are probably yeah. dying to find out what who the hell is this? Who the hell are these people and where do they come from? Yeah. And I know I am. Yeah, and why why we haven't heard about it yet, but yeah. Well, that's because we are who we are. Mm. <laughs> Mm. Mm. <clears throat> oh, Bryce, this is a really elegant, you know, I, 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 I asked him, uh, you know, Atanasio, then you go Valor, which I think is Atanasio light. This mm. is even lighter than Valor as far as the malolactic goes. It's so, it's, Oh my gosh, it's just so elegant. I, I'm I'm re I'm I'm smitten. Fr yeah. Frankly, I'm I'm you know what? I'm not even gonna hold back, dude. I think you'll agree with me. I think yep, right a promise <laughs> yeah. nominee. Yeah, yep. he's got I, his I already, <laughs> I'd already grabbed it and I was like <laughs> I had it ready because like I was just reading and I was like, unless they mess up, this has to be good. Just oh. with production method. Yeah. Well, let's let's give them the ins and outs. Yeah. They, they were nice enough to send us a, some some a, a nice typed up letter. Mm -hmm. uh, we are uh, it's kind of a press release or a news release for them. Yeah, but we can um, dig through it and and figure out. Yeah, right. yeah. Now they say it's located nine thousand feet above sea level in the Sierra del Tigre mountains of Jalisco, outside Guadalajara. And you mentioned. That this is this is an area near it's it's above Lake Chapala or something. So well, southern of Lake Chapala, but obviously with the elevation, it's high. So there's still mountains around that area. But when I see nine thousand feet, I'm like, gosh, that's that's high, that's man. Above like if we think of the Highlands, right, like Aranda, right, uh, right, Jesus Maria. I was like, I don't think they reach nine thousand. And so I, I had to use Google Maps, and that's when I found out it was essentially the central part of lake chapala but on the southern edge which i've taken that route before and it is you know mountainous there is okay. elevation there okay and uh yeah it's still jalisco it's south of guadalajara um well, they, so, uh what's yeah. the uh do we have that's the one thing i should i should have asked you what's what's our gnome number on 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 this distillery oh so single brand gnome um 1636 i just looked that up prior um yeah there's no other gnomes there which some of the other things I looked at were just talking about, yeah, uh, creating the distillery that I guess the brand was talking about. Um, they didn't say it, but kind of they wanted a tequila brand. So they mm -hmm. were looking at kind of the white label route, right? Um, yeah. And then just decided, no, like, let's, let, let's build something. And so their intention was to create their tequila, not through ordering, um, not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but just through actual full-on production um so yeah nine thousand feet um but and that's not necessarily like good or bad i, I don't have a preference on altitude no <laughs> I, it, I, I wish it i just, was that knowledgeable to have a, a preference but i yeah. don't 
No, um, it it just I know what we're talking off camera that it actually mm. it affects your three elements. It it affects your baking because the length mm. of time it bakes. It it affects fermentation for the length of time it needs to ferment. Correct. And then distillation because because that's just like cooking, you know. It, it's a it's like a cooking recipe at a higher elevation you know everything yeah. changes yeah you have your like oxygen density but then you also have your coolness so it's like both of those affect you know baking and, and fermenting uh but besides that i mean that's that's great i've i've not necessarily had a bad tequila from high elevation so i like that um but yeah i mean 72 hours in traditional brick ovens um they use a tahona um which is getting Honestly, more and more popular, which I like to see. Didn't wasn't there a uh, there was an Instagram uh, post not too long ago of some uh, forget which distillery was installing a, a oh the Taona. Vivancos fourteen fourteen adding their Taona would look like a like a torture it looked like something well, out of Conan the Barbarian. Remember how they're, they're, yeah their Taona pushing. has some rough edges. Is that the yeah, one you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, it's it's made for humans to push. So it's like what are we what, what are we back in slavery again? <laughs> yeah, are, yeah, are, yeah. Hire uh, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now it says that the the tequilas were developed by founder Dade Suarez, master distiller Juan Reyes, mm -hmm. and they were going to launch this brand in New York City. So they were. Uh, I mean, uh, th that's not that's. Mm -hmm. In, in Texas, we say yeah, I can't say it anymore. But um, well, it's a he, he's a Yankee. <laughs> it, well, it's an it, it was an old uh, salsa commercial. New York, uh, City. New York get, City. Yeah, get a you know it's one of the bigger yeah. markets, and chances are it'll yeah. be in Texas and it'll be in California. You know, we yeah. we got very lucky. Uh, it says the 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 process the agaves are cooked for seventy two hours in in stone brick ovens. Uh, they're macerated with the Taona volcanic rock wheel uh let's see we, and well, they stress two ingredients yeah they stress two ingredients agave and water uh which i like when that happens that means they're not adding a yeast so no uh, it's a, it's a, it's open air so it's whatever yeah. whatever's in the atmosphere whatever yeah. the the microclimate has we know that it that it does a lot more uh that kind of a open air fermentation people talk about it more now in mezcal because yeah, it's more open to the environment yeah I, I mean i don't have a problem with pitching yeast whatsoever but i do like open air fermentation and some and some people pitch yeast and still have open air so you're getting a mix but yeah they, they well, don't I mean, you know you get sh champagne yeast because yeah. it tends to be the final product tends to be a little bit more elegant a little mm -hmm. bit more in european in flavor you know yeah the, the some, some old some old school you know the uh Comarinas are using a family yeast. Uh, but yeah, they're talking about wild malolactic fermentation over 80 hours. Um, endemic yeast. Um, uh, it says Alto Canto calls this process tequila de altura. The, you know, they, they, uh, uh, a, a tequila at higher elevation. Okay. Uh, a unique and innovative concept that reinvents the tr traditional tequila in its purest form. I I'd say it's as pure as... as the driven snow as far as i'm concerned uh now they also say that this blanco tequila is settled in a silo for 25 days well no it says 25 days in a white oak container yeah so that yeah that's what i was gonna get to so i'm looking so at their website is, right this now is technically a blanco suave yeah yeah arrested that, that's, arrested the, blanco. that's the, uh okay i did not know that you know and the funny thing is that there's no there's no added coloring to it so i would imagine that this is a uh this is a larger, it's not a, it's not a barrel. It's a pipon, you know, the, the kind like Tequileño uses where it's less of the liquid yeah. is touching the wood. So it, it's a much bigger container. That would make sense. Yeah. Uh, it says that. Um, so I'm looking at it right now, 25 days in American oak wood. Well, they say pipe, but I think they meant pipon. Well, they meant pipon. Yeah. That's the word that they use in Spanish. So it's a, oh, gotcha. The translation yeah. isn't. It's a, there's a couple of things lost in translation. So, yeah. you know, uh, um, that's, no, that, that, yeah, I got that, nothing. That's... I got, you know, I got, I got no problem with that because no, it, I... uh, like you said, it rounds out the edges and that's a similar situation that happens with tequilas in a matitan. Herradura yeah. was the first one to do that. So, yeah, so, I mean, good call with talking about because like the clarity is Blanco all day long. Yeah. Uh, it's not 25 days and a papon makes sense. 25 days in a uh, American oak, you, you have like just a hint, but um, 
I yeah. I love it. I think I think they they've they've hit a home run on this one. I don't think they yeah they, they I, haven't I, stepped missed a step. I, I've had Blancos that have been rested for twenty days and yeah the like, lunar rested stuff and there's a few yeah actual barrels and you get just a hint if you wouldn't have brought that up even though I like I read it earlier I would I would have forgotten. Well, I didn't even know. I I was checking the the, the stats. Uh, the, the yeah. Stats and it's like, oh wow. But it yeah. definitely has an influence, you know, which is great. But obviously, you're, you're not having this blanco and saying like, is this repo light? It's not. This is just a honestly a magnificent blanco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, and this I think is that now now the butteriness was was amplified or was enhanced because of the time in the in the pipon. Yeah. Uh, so that makes a lot of sense. Now it says uh, Alto Canto Sustainability Initiatives, uh, and this is Im important. Now they they foster biodiversity in the region with the planting of cherry and apple trees, renowned for their beneficial yeast profiles. That's true. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And in fact, uh, some of some of the um, areas that, that where they they do uh, mezcal, you know, are you've, if you have tropical fruit, some of them are stone fruit, some of them are papayas and and guavas you know and that adds yeah. the, the whole that whole that's a whole jungle difference uh, of of uh of a flavor profile and all that that goes into in fact uh, and we have that video that i i stressed uh, um in the catador course where you you listen to ron cooper when he talks about how there are microbes at, at every hundred meters in in the atmosphere that affect what goes in to your final product in this case mezcal so i would imagine that's that's a that's a that's awesome yeah. no that's yeah awesome. and like we we talk about like you know pitching yeast when i say pitching yeast i mean intentionally adding yeast but you can still cultivate your yeast in the way of yes choosing what plants you plant in the area because even uh you know the Von the Voncos, even though yes they use the ch champagne yeast but they have Mango all the fruit plants. trees. They have all the citrus yeah. plants, like all it, all you know, the citrus trees it does, and a lot of places do yeah. do it. You know, to it, to help influence their uh, their atmosphere. Well, you'll notice when you when you go to some of these really great distilleries, like you know Fortaleza, and you you know Fortaleza is covered in trees and plants, mm. and oh, and, and, and it's very quiet and reverent. You know, and even you, livestock, because you have to remember that's a different type of yeast. As yeah, well. yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, it says, uh, furthermore, the brand empowers the local community through fair wages, community development initiatives, and investments in education and infrastructure. Mm. Wow. Waste reduction is central to Alto Canto sustainability initiatives with a focus on recyclable packaging. That's good. Those boxes don't feel recyclable, but they I guess they are. Yeah, I, I could see a little fiber-esque in them. Yeah. Well, I, you know what? I'm impressed. I can't wait to try this reposado because, uh, and that's our next tasting. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we've already nominated this as a brand of promise in the Blanco category. It is do, do we want to do a controversial take real quick? Sure, let's do it. I'm getting a little more rustic quality. Um, so it's opening up even than, more than a, than a than a Fortaleza. Oh. I mean, do we want to go there? Or we well, just now, now Flor Fortaleza has, and I remember no. we're, we're talking two different. They're solid. You're right. I guess this would be different because of the this is two different. Yeah, because Fortaleza yeah. is a Valle Tequila. It's a, it's a, it's a low burns or El Valle. That's true. And this is not. Yeah. So, so, and the fact that his fruit trees, his area there, he's got Bogan. If you've ever been there, and I've only, I've only been there once. I was there the yeah, first been there once. time. And his Bougainvillea and his trees, and he's such a, I remember him. We he was guiding us uh, uh, through the um, walking us through the the facility, and, and he said yeah, his great beautiful. grandfather said that th he says you should always plant trees. He says because trees last forever, you know. And yeah. it, and it's it, it it was just very, um, you know, heartfelt when mm. when you know. And it was literally the first time there were no tours in those days, folks. This yeah. was this was something that was arranged. Um, it just came together. It, it was the forerunner of the Blue Agave Tour. It was the, the initial, the launch, the maiden voyage, which I think I, I've written about, and I'm going to, I'm I'm going to release those those blog posts that I wrote about uh, for our 25th anniversary for Tequila Aficionado, which is this month, later on in the month. Mm. We've been doing this 25 years, 
And uh, Fortaleza for me was was that initial yeah. tour was so special. I mean, now I remember talking to, we were communicating over Facebook and I said, Guillermo, I remember when your cave didn't have lights, man. <laughs> we had no, you know, <clears throat> now he's got light. He goes, yeah, we've done a few improvements since that time. But that cave yeah. was pitch dark. And so that that meant you you know you you use three elements when you do tastings you use sight mm -hmm. smell and 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 taste yeah. well you know when you're blind because you can't see that you can't see your yeah. hand in front of you yeah. that's how dark it was in there yeah sight's gone so, so your sight's gone and you're hoping that you don't spill it you know you don't spill this liquid and then you get the flavor of that taona because that taona really does his taona really definitely had a specific stamp and flavor that some people don't like and that's where we're getting at to, to huh. you know with, with what they would consider off flavors because not everybody likes the taste of a taona they they don't like la piedra as, as they say or they don't <laughs> like the malolactic but you know guys like bryce and me we yeah, but, I, I, I dig that man i want to say that i mean i don't want to go this far but like those are fighting words man like, yeah i see see yeah. <laughs> no but i've heard i've heard it i've heard that yeah, I mean, I get it. Other I get distillers, it. Some people like who, clean spirits. You know, yeah. I don't want to say smooth, but like clean, softer, and, more approachable, yeah. And softer. These, yeah. yeah, and, and to and me, I, like tequila, I, like tequila has to have a punch. It, tequila is all about a fingerprint. You know, it's there's something there. I mean, any anything in the kind of Mexican culture, there there's a a robustness to it. I mean, you know, like, have, have you had their candies? I'm like, no, no, no none of those are smooth. No. You know? uh, yeah. yeah and and you know if you're talking cooking with chilies and and, and yeah you know mexican cuisine is every state's got a different style of cuisine and it's all yeah. different none of it's the same yeah the only reason i brought up fortaleza is it reminded me of that but yeah this is different but you're right with the the different production methods they're not like no the altitude equal as to well. compare, it could be, but yeah it could literally you could just you could pin it down to process and to war yeah, which is rare in tequila when you talk about that anymore. Yeah, but if you can't find that and you can find this, pick it up. Yeah, uh, you, yeah. Know, you know, you know how up. hard it is to find yeah. Fortaleza. All you, yeah. all you Pappy Van Winkle idiots have just turned that yeah. into some, oh, I know. a sub a sub economy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like for, the whiskey guys. You yeah. know what? There's there's other ones out there, and like I said, if you like if you like uh, Atanasio and you like Valor, mm -hmm. this is right up your alley, mm -hmm. man. And and I'm I'm impressed as hell. Dude, yes, amazing, yeah. amazing tequila. It's called Alto Canto. Stick with us, folks. That's our take on the Blanco, a brand of yes, a brand of promise nominee uh, in the in the Blanco Suave category. I'm so glad yeah. I I picked that out. Thank it's, you. It's folks. not in the market yet, but you on our socials, you'll you'll find out when it is. We're gonna we're gonna follow up and we'll let yeah, you. Yeah, know. for sure. Yeah. Um, in fact, and and uh, when we do the Reposado uh, review here shortly, we'll we'll give you the names of the two ladies that made this happen for mm -hmm. us. And I'm not sure where they come in, but we're gonna find out. Okay. But that's our take. I'm Mike Morales here in Southern California. That gentleman out there is Bryce Taylor, Austin, Texas. You've been watching and listening to another special edition of Sipping Off the Cuff here on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our channels and networks. Uh, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, give us a like, follow follow Bryce on Austin Tequila Connoisseurs. You can follow Tequila Aficionado on Instagram because we're everywhere. everywhere. Um, and whatever you do, folks, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely. There we go.